The Rothsey Rooms. Balata. Balata then. Up over Glenshia's giant stags loom from the gloom, on down the main street as Union flags are flutter and round into the Rothsey Rooms where royalty may or may not ooze from the very tongue and groove panelling. Tonight, Matthew, we're fine dining deep in the heart of the Windsor Scottish playground. Antlers and wild green paintwork adorn those walls, chefs crack on in the open kitchen and possibly not quite enough waiters are on duty to instantly cope with the demands of this evening's largely mature customer base. It's a slow start, then, a bit of thumb twiddling, head turning, first drink action from I just back from the hills chums before orders are placed, winds upward and things then swing smoothly into action. Well, fairly smoothly. Nobody can detect any of the promised whiskiness from the opening salvo in the £55 fine dining menu, cured salmon, treacle, dill and lemon. But it is nonetheless perfectly pleasant. Crunchiness, unctuousness, firm duck meat and lush beetroot, pickled and plain, and a very clever addition of sweetly seductive dried carrot cake make up the next course. We taste, we nod, we agree, that's pretty nice. There's a high grove shop somewhere near here, a royal butcher, baker and probably candlestick maker dotted around the extremely crisp town square and we're told, during a lull in the action, that the royals were recently spotted in the carriage, an expensively fitted out but to me, anyway, utterly soulless cafe cum chintzy restaurant just around the corner. As for Prince Charles' connection to this place? The clue is apparently in the name. He's also the Duke of Rothsey, news to me and in fact the Rothsey Rooms are supported by a royal back charity of some sort. Normally this would sound alarm bells given that charities and restaurants are rarely a successful mix, but this restaurant also has a Michelin recommendation. An entry in the guide under the curiously hard to work out what it means section entitled the Michelin Plate. This sits in that no man's land somewhere below very reliable Bib Gormand and safely above the usually hopelessly unreliable Michelin recommends. Fresh ingredients? Yes. Freshly prepared? Yes. We're now into a stone bass, a fashionably farmed fish, with its skin bubbled to a decent crisp, a crowd-pleasing rolled ham hock alongside with mushroom and celeria cardfully placed around and beneath. And before we know it the main of venison with another rolled and pastry-coated crowd-pleaser, this time a sausage roll thing presumably of shoulder, onion, bramble and parsnip is being commented on and polished off. Venison nowadays, even in the heart of stag land, sadly, is always disappointingly bland. I say that being brought up in a house where the old man would hang the just shot deer in the old shed for more on this story, visit the news article link.